new law students often struggle with the complicated relationship between the law and morality. The law is often not based on morality, and yet morality is seldom completely irrelevant. Kenneth Andrews was a war veteran, a widower, but apparently quite simple-minded. He worked for David Jones, where he met Marjorie Parker. She confided in him about her marital difficulties and eventually left her husband and moved in. Within a few months, she complained that if Andrews threw her out, she would be homeless. She manipulated him into transferring the title to his home. He agreed, but only if she transferred the title back to him if she ever returned to her husband. Immediately after the transfer, she became distant and soon asked Andrews to leave so that her husband could move in. Justice Stable said, The picture which clearly emerges is that of a ruthless, cunning woman who came to realise that in the plaintiff she had found a man who would literally be as clay in the hands of a potter. Apparently emboldened by her success and believing the plaintiff to be so soft-hearted, good-natured, simple-minded and trusting that he would not hit back, she had no hesitation in virtually telling him that he had been the victim of a scheme to which Delilah herself would have given an approving nod. Andrews sued for the return of his title. Parker's lawyer said he could not because their agreement was an immoral scheme keeping her from her husband and the law would not enforce an immoral contract. Justice Stables said, Surely what is immoral must be judged by the current standards of morality of the community. Notoriously, the social judgments of today upon matters of immorality are as different from those of last century as is the bikini from a bustle. So if the agreement between the parties was based on an immoral consideration, then the immorality was not such according to modern standards as to deprive the plaintiff of the right to enforce it. It surely cannot be in accord with the public interests or public policy that she should retain property which she obtained through a deceitful course of conduct designed to get a home for her husband. This case teaches us that where the law considers morality, it should consider the contemporary morality of the day, not the morality of some earlier time.